Well, Steve Talks is pleased to be talking with Dr. Robert Stevens, who is Professor of Music at the University of Connecticut, and um, we are continuing to explore uh, the way in which Clive Bradley, the late master musician, and Steve Van Der Ranger touched the lives and uh, the objectives and people in general uh, during his time, and Dr. Stevens was one of the people who admired the work of Clive Bradley, especially in terms of uh, the, the synergy between Mr. Bradley and Pentonic Steel Orchestra, five-time New York Panorama Champions, and Dr. Stevens himself uh, also brought down some students from the campus of University of Connecticut to Brooklyn, New York earlier on this year in 2005 to uh, a type of workshop run by Pentonic Steel Orchestra at which they performed some of uh, Clive Bradley's arrangements, and um, I think we We'll let you take it from there, uh, Dr. Stevens. Um, welcome to uh, When Steel Talks. Very good to have you uh, with us. And we'd just like you to, you know, take it up from here and chat a bit about your experiences well, with Clive Bradley, his music, and some of the plans that you had hoped to uh, put into place uh, before his untimely passing. Well, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank Winfield Talks for recognizing uh, not only the importance of Clive Bradley, but the importance of his work, um, and and for allowing me uh, an opportunity just to offer a few comments uh, about him. Um, I, I have to say that my most my most incredible moments uh, with Clive occurred when I came down to Brooklyn uh, for uh, Labor Day. Uh, festivities, uh, and actually, he rode in the truck that I drove. That was Pachuca, right? Pachuca. <laughs> and uh, so we spent a, a great deal of time together that evening, uh, and it was certainly before that I certainly recognized his importance. But in uh, informal conversations throughout that evening, uh, my respect for him grew even more. Uh, he was a, a consummate musician not only in his, his sense of craftsmanship, his ability to put sounds together in, in interesting ways, but in, in conceptually in terms of how he thought about what he was doing uh, and how he attempted to match it to the people that he was working with. Mm. Tr truly, truly an extraordinary man in, in that regard. Um, for, for me, I, I saw this as just an extraordinary opportunity to try to, con to uh, connect with uh, someone uh, who clearly is a giant at what he does. And, and you know, we use the word genius uh, all too frequently and, and often it's misapplied, but here is a person who I think that the term is absolutely apropos. Uh, his music was just simply stunning. Uh, his knowledge of the materials of music and how to use them, how to manipulate sound and how to manipulate silence uh, was, it's just, was simply extraordinary. And, and I wanted somehow for uh, our students to meet him, uh, to mm -hmm. know him, and to, to listen to this master talk about his craft. And unfortunately, he was taken away from us before we had an opportunity to do that. I also wanted uh, our students here on campus, we have a West Indian student organization, I also wanted the students to be able to connect with someone who represents part of their cultural heritage as well. Uh, and uh, uh, and they were and, and we were in conversation with them, uh, and they were excited about that possibility. The third thing that I wanted to do is that I, um, as I have become more and more interested in uh, the steel band, uh, is to is to try to create a whole history. Uh, we had planned to uh, do a, a an interview with him in the television studio here. Okay. Uh, make it a part of our archives um, uh, here and, and again unfortunately that opportunity is lost. Mm, indeed. So um, apparently um, I understand that you were also uh, hoping to uh, visit Trinidad uh, for the Panorama season in 2006 to further observe Clive Bradley at work um, yet in yet another Panorama environment this time with uh, this brought us to orchestra. That was something you had in planning stages, was it not? Yes. In fact, that is that is exactly what I intended to do. 
Um, you know, it, it's um, it, it's not often that you get a chance to to talk with someone who um, guided um, two uh, of the top steel pan groups in uh, New York to the first or second place, uh, and also someone on the other hand who across the pond was also guiding uh, the top group in the Desperados. So uh, he's an extremely, extremely important figure, uh, not only musically, I think, but historically mm -hmm. uh, as well. And I, I really was looking forward to seeing him in a different venue, uh, in perhaps what one might characterize as his home venue, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and having a chance to interact, interact with him there. Understood. Well, Dr. Stevens, or if you prefer, Bob, um, <laughs> it's really, really good to, you know, good of you, in fact, to uh, take time to share your thoughts on your experiences with Clive Bradley, um, a humble person, but still a genius, even in his humility, and as you say, a master musician, and uh, I believe the word you used was stunning. So um, thank you very much for chatting with the Wednesday of Talks and sharing uh, your thoughts on Clive Bradley, the late Clive Bradley, with the global PAN community. Thank you very much again. Dr. Stevens from the campus of University of Connecticut in the USA.